Hello, Sun Prairie educators. Thank you for letting me take some time uh, to, to speak with you today about our school district's curriculum mapping project. Um, as you know, I'm Alice Murphy, the Assistant District Administrator of Instructional Programs. And we're going to work together today on um, advancing our curriculum mapping within our Build Your Own Curriculum system. As we begin our workshop today, what I'd like to do is help set the stage for our work together. As you know, our curriculum mapping project began about two years ago, and since that time there's been some heavy work that's happened. Uh, sometimes it's been tedious and always very labor intensive, but I hope you are continue to be encouraged um, as we move forward to know that it's very purposeful and very long term. I've watched teachers, groups of teachers working together with their curriculum leaders and doing some amazing things with our curriculum mapping. The goal for our work today um, is, is rather long term um, and although it has a, a foreseeable end in sight, our, as you know curriculum mapping is a dynamic project that never really stops. So together we want to agree that by June of 2013 we hope to have 75 percent of the courses that are offered currently in grades 6 through 12 and all of the courses that are offered in K-12 art, health, music, and physical education developed in the Build Your Own Curriculum system with a curriculum map. What I mean when I say the courses would be developed, I mean that the course itself is entered to include a course overview, the units of instruction with the duration of each unit, the topics that will be taught, a list of academic vocabulary, the assessment types must be identified, and then, very critical, any common assessments that have already been developed need to be linked carefully to the course. Let me review with you for just a minute the purpose of curriculum map mapping by, by just giving it a little more definition. And I know we've been working together on this for a long time, so you have a, a very fundamental understanding of it, in fact, uh, a great deal of, of understanding in some cases. But the purpose of curriculum mapping, as we've defined it in our district, is that we know it to be very different from any other form of curriculum development. What a digital curriculum map will allow us to do is to reveal to each other the, the, our actual professional practice. We're able to share digitally with one another um, what we're doing in the teaching and learning process, especially those who support our work, other teachers in our department, other teachers at our grade level, other teachers and assistants that support our teaching and learning, and the resources that we're allowed to share. We also can share our curriculum mapping then in all of our course ideas with other school districts in our state who also are on the Build Your Own Curriculum system, as well as our counterparts in other states of the nation. I know some of you have already uh, explored what other districts and other states are doing with their curriculum mapping, and that served to us to our advantage as we're able to share back and forth good ideas for reinforcing our teaching and learning. With a curriculum map, we're able to learn from others. It's very immediate because our work is there in front of each of us, and it's very authentic. It explains exactly what we are doing, proposed to do, uh, to increase the learning for our students. A good cur curriculum mapping project starts with the standards so that we all agree from the places where we are starting as we design our units of instruction um, around those standards. A curriculum map also provides for us very clear and linear scope and sequence for our work. For instance, with science, K-5 teachers can really share their, their, their work, their units of instruction, the sequence of the learning for elementary students with the teachers of grades 6, 7, 8, 9, and all the way through high school. It also helps those elementary teachers then to understand where their students need to be as high school learners to get ready for their graduation and their college and career uh, beyond our own public school setting. So I know you understand the, the very solid purpose of good curriculum mapping. It also helps us to standardize our teaching and that's something we hold as a very high value in the Sun Prairie Area School District. We believe that we need to start very clearly from standards. In the past, our Wisconsin model academic standards are now converting to Common Core in literacy and mathematics, and soon we'll have the new generation science standards. All of this directs the kind of work that, that we uh, use as we design our uh, explicit instruction in our courses. So from the standards then, we create course outlines, again, units, resources, 
we prepare for differentiated types of learning and share those ideas with one another and then create common assessments. All of this happens, uh, this work happens even before we put um, any of the digital entries into our curriculum map, uh, but it helps us to standardize what it is we're doing in all of our classrooms throughout our district. I believe that improved instruction, and I know you do too, is intentional, it's not incidental. And what I mean by that is that we are, we are intentionally taking steps forward to improve our professional practice. In many ways, it's like a medical, medical model now where we are documenting, very clearly documenting, what it is we intend to teach because it gives us a chance to analyze what we are, are putting in place and then take prescriptive action to make improvements as we can uh, work with our colleagues to bring the best possible ideas to the, the, the delivery of our instruction. It also allows us to utilize data because it gives us a very clear place to enter the data and to share it with one another as we make decisions about what and how we are teaching. It, we can form uh, professional learning com communities and collaborate around the data that is very much present within our curriculum map. And then it, by that means it helps us to improve every aspect of each and every course that, that we are preparing. One of the real purposes for our works, uh, our intense work right now in our curriculum map is because we are getting prepared to become very effective educators. As we study the framework for teaching as uh, designed by Charlotte Danielson and look at the domains um, of teaching and learning, uh, we are very clear about the fact that domain one that helps us to become experts at planning and preparation of our instruction very much anticipates a curriculum map. This last summer, I know I shared with you, I had the opportunity to uh, be at a workshop with Charlotte Danielson as she helped to, us to understand how good curriculum mapping for 21st century learners uh, really helps us to deliver it according to uh, her, the domains and the uh, framework for teaching that she has designed. So let's take a minute now um, and just look clearly at the framework for teaching uh, that Charlotte Danielson provides for us and look at the planning and preparation uh, components that she has um, outlined in this domain. The demonstration of knowledge and, and of content and pedagogy are included as we are creating our curriculum map. Demonstrating the knowledge of students, setting the instructional objectives clearly happens in our units and topics. Demonstrating the knowledge of resources, designing coherent instruction, and designing the student achievement um, aspects to include assessment is all part of domain one. As we work together to create our curriculum map, that's very clearly the focus of our, our planning um, together. Then I would also want you to um, focus on domain three, which talks about instruction. As we consider all of these aspects of this domain, such as communicating with students, using questioning um, and discussion techniques, engaging students in the learning, using assessment in our instruction and demonstrating flexibility and responsiveness can all be incorporated into the kind of, of units and resources and activities, learning activities and assessments that we are preparing as we work in teams and enter all in, in our curriculum map. So all that being said, it's time to stop and say where are we now with uh, curriculum mapping and what have we already achieved in terms of creating our Build Your Own curriculum. Uh, now I'd like to take us back to at the beginning of the school year when we talked about curriculum mapping and the four phases because it's a time for us to assess where we have been, what we have achieved, and the stage that we are currently um, at in this curriculum development. First of all, uh, phase one is laying the foundation. And I view that as the time that teachers have spent together, and I've watched you doing this, working in your content area groups or grade level groups, uh, laying the foundation for what are the standards that, that we have before us now, what are the changes that have been made, and collaborating around how will our instruction transform from what we've been doing to what we need to do now. So most of our groups have already um, engaged deeply in laying the foundation and understand the purpose of the standards, you've unpacked the new standards, and you're very clear about the crosswalks or where we need to be now. I believe, as a district, I can say we're safely out of phase one and very uh, strongly into phase two, which is launching the process. Now, the steps of launching the process include 
actually creating those maps, designing the units of instruction together, deciding as teams the, the duration for how long we intend to teach each of the units, and then how those units will break down into to topics, resources, activities, and so on. I would say, for the most part, most of the teachers in our district that are involved in the mapping project are really uh, pretty much into or going past the launching the mapping process. So then we move to phase three, which is the next big dimension of our work and will take us into, I would say, the next few years before we are able to get this entirely accomplished. And that is informing the maps with assessment. What we're going to be doing uh, during the next stages is reviewing the instructional units that we have created together and looking at how that instruction um, is, is the best model we can produce and then embedding all of the necessary assessment tools. It will take us a while to get those perfect and they will change over time, but it's, it's important that we at least get some common pieces in there that we can agree uh, will actually measure the achievement of all of our learners. Then finally, the fourth phase is advancing the maps into the future. Um, and again, that's going to take us all into uh, future months and years of time because our, our curriculum maps will continue to evolve. I know it's hard to believe it when we're starting the process together that this is really going to be long term, uh, but a digital curriculum map is really the, the avenue that will take us all to where we want to be and to have a dynamic set of learning tools uh, that can be consistently shared among all of our educators. So what is what's Build Your Own Curriculum actually going to look like when it is complete? And I know we've also we've had these discussions several times, um, but what I want you to remember is that there will be a public view of our curriculum map. Uh, right now we are able to look at maps from other school districts and they will be able to see ours. So it's imperative that we produce the very best quality that we can. Um, what the, our public will see, our, our own families uh, in public will be able to see our curriculum maps as they are lined up uh, for each content area. And when they go to the public site, they will be able to see the course overview and then uh, the units of instruction. They, as they click on the units, they will be able to see, of course, the duration um, and perhaps the topics. But it's up to us to decide then how much more deeply the, the public will be able to go to our courses. I can tell you that there's a lot of anticipation um, in our community already waiting for this doc these documents to be available to our parents and students in particular. So we're anxiously awaiting the day that we'll be able to publish at least most of them to the public site. Now from the teacher's point of view, uh, as you're working with your curriculum leaders, what are we actually expecting when we say the courses will be developed? And you can uh, roam around in BYOC, I know you've done that already, to take a look at what do really quality courses look like in the system. Uh, what I'm showing you now is the English 9 um, selection of, of uh, courses, and we'll be able to select one and see that in Exploring English, you can see there that the, the credits are listed, the course duration. There's a nice course overview that would give anyone a good broad idea of what the course will offer to students. Then there's a selection of the units, and again, all of those are listed with the duration of time that the teacher intends to use to teach them. As you click on each of the units, then you'll see the learning topics broken down, also with a bit of a description, and then also the duration for the days of instruction. We could continue to roll through this course and you would see academic vocabulary, learning resources, and assessment documents already embedded. This is a very high quality course that I view as a model for the rest of us as we um, begin to develop um, the rest of the courses that will be entered. Another really fine example that I'm showing you here is the eighth grade health course. Good course overview, uh, lots of units, the duration is there. The teachers are already teaching using this instrument um, to keep them uh, moving along in a very common way uh, with all of their eighth graders. The topics are listed there with also um, a duration and days of instruction. You can get to the topics, break down uh, more deeply, get more description, and also the knowledge and skills associated with each of those um, learning topics. Uh, health teachers have already embedded their assess assessments with rubrics that are common for all their teachers. So they are, they are very uh, advanced in their development, and I, I would say that they are, if you're looking for a good model of a quality course development, uh, go to the health uh, and FIED teachers um, areas. 
Um, this is a sample of, of FIED skills, uh, so that the, broken down again by duration. So it's very common for all the teachers to be able to share. So lastly, what I'd like to do um, is then just get us ready and launch us for the rest of our work today. Um, your curriculum leaders are going to now take over uh, and uh, help you to work through uh, a couple of stages. Okay, we're going to uh, ask you to take a look at your BYOC matrix with your curriculum leader, and on there you have documented the work that you've already accomplished. I want you to spend a few minutes reviewing that, and that will allow you to set the goal for what you hope to accomplish today. Uh, you will all agree upon uh, what you're going to get done, and at the conclusion of this workshop, you'll review together, again, what you have been able to complete, and then indicate this on your BYOC matrix. So at that point, as, we, as you conclude your uh, session with your curriculum leader, you will create a plan for continuing the work throughout the rest of this year with a goal in mind for where you will be by the end of June 2013. And finally, I would ask that you complete the evaluation for today's workshop before you leave. And uh, let me express my great appreciation to you, first for letting me uh, get you started for your work today with a great deal of encouragement. Thank you.